They praised in unison your conquering hand, O Lord. For wisdom opened mouths that were mute and gave eloquence to the tongues of infants. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have united many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in faith of their hearts, and homage do homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As a crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You, children of Israel, why are you amazed at this, and why do you look so in intently at us, as if we made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by the faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong. And the faith that comes through it has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought you to fulfillment, when he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant your times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days, You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors. When he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him a little less than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over your works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O sheep and oxen, yes, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the sea. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had came to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. They were still talking and speaking about this when he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because those do not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he did said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. They were still incredulous for joy and were amazed. So he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he put open their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Something very curious that we have to notice, not only from this passage that we have just heard, from the Gospel of Jesus coming to the Apostles, um, but even throughout the Scriptures, throughout especially the New Testament and the Gospels, we hear how Jesus sometimes when He comes to people, he usually uses this very special greeting. He always says, the peace be with you. And of course, we are very familiar with this greeting. We hear it oftentimes here at Mass, not only sometimes in the beginning, but also right before the sign of peace. And this is a greeting that obviously goes way back into ancient times. And even the Israelites, the Jewish people, would use this greeting. And as some of you may know, the translation of this um, greeting in Hebrew would be Shalom. This is the greeting that people use all the time, and some of them still use it today. And even this word, this phrase, Shalom, it literally means be complete, be whole. And obviously, as the greeting sort of progressed, it became or took up this notion of wishing people well. It is a way of saying be successful, have prosperity, be healthy. And so it can be used to mean several different things, all of which are really, really good, obviously. And so Jesus, even in this moment in the Gospel, when he comes first to his disciples, he said this to them. And obviously, he says it also to us, especially now in this world. He says, peace be with you. And of course, again, this is a recurring thing. I mean, why is it so important? Why couldn't Jesus 
which has faith or love or even, you know, um, I don't know, perseverance. Why peace above all things? And I think the reason um, is that peace makes us see things in a different way. And I'll give you an example. Especially nowadays that everything, with everything that's going on, we tend to get very desperate and anxious and we get very worried about the things that need to happen and the things that I need to take care of and the solutions that I need to find for all these other things. And so if I am, let's say, uh, a dad, uh, the sole provider of my household, if I didn't have money to put food on the table, if I didn't have a roof over my head, for my wife and my children, if I didn't have enough money to buy the medicine that my children and my wife need, especially in this moment of need, would I be worried exactly or specifically about coming to God or praying as much as I would want to? Probably sometimes no. If I were one of those people that is constantly having troubles and needs to find solutions for all the different things that are going wrong in my life, I sometimes don't have that, I'm not in the right mindset to come to God, to come to pray for Him, because again, I feel so overwhelmed and so anxious about everything that is going wrong, everything that I need to fix. Because sometimes we feel like everything that's going on is on my shoulders. It's a burden that I have to carry. And so I have to figure out a way to fix this. And again, in that anxious mind, we sometimes forget about that. We sometimes let all those things kind of drag us away and further and further more away from our God. To the point where we don't turn to Him, but we turn to ourselves. To the fact that I need to do something in order to solve this problem and solve this situation. But the moment that we have peace, the moment that we have serenity, we're able to think. We're able to stop, pause, and meditate on the things that need to happen on the things that I need first and foremost in order to carry on. And of course, those moments of peace turn us literally towards God because we know that He has our life in His hands, that we know that we can't do this alone. We know that we need supernatural help. We need divine help in order to do everything that we need to do. And especially, peace opens up a way for us to manifest our faith in the Redeemer Lord. The peace is what gives us that calm and that serenity to turn to Him, to surrender completely to our God and say, we can't do this without you. I can't do this without you. Without getting overwhelmed, without, without getting anxious or desperate, peace brings us to be collected once again. Peace brings us to look to Jesus for the help and the assistance that we need in our lives. Especially, again, it's a way for our faith to manifest more strongly and purely because we are able to focus on the things that matter. We are able to focus on the things that are important, especially as Catholics, as Christians, we have to focus on Jesus. He is our sole provider. He is the one that will solve all our problems. He is the one that is always willing to put everything of himself to give us help to give us um, peace, to give us everything that we need in order to carry on. That's what love does. And that's what He wants to give us through this peace. He wants to make us aware of His love in our lives. But even then, we have to remember that sometimes even love has to make some tough or difficult decisions. And sometimes we not, might not be able to see them, especially in recent days, Sometimes we are focused or we have to endure the loss of a loved one. And we may think, this is not supposed to happen. This shouldn't have happened. I don't deserve this. My family doesn't deserve this. We know so many other people who could probably enjoy this because they're not that great people. They're not good Catholics or Christians. They maybe not. Have, they do not have the faith that I have. So the fact that I'm enjoying this, that I'm going through this, it's not fair. But again, peace, the peace that comes from Jesus, brings us to acknowledge and to recognize the fact that the will of God will always be done. And maybe right now, again, I can't see the full picture. 
I can't see the big picture. I only see the fragments and the moments that I am experiencing right now. And so that causes me pain sometimes. But the peace of God, the peace that Jesus wants to give us, helps us recognize that His will will be done. And His will is for the salvation of humanity, for the salvation of our souls, for our well-being in general. I may not understand it. I may not know why certain things are happening. But with the peace that Jesus gives me, I will be able to surrender myself. I will be able to express continuously my faith for my Savior. Because I know that He's got my best interest in mind. That He's always walking alongside me. If He already gave His life for me on the cross, I can only expect good things from Him. So especially as everything that's going on in the world is still sometimes keeping us a little bit agitated. Let us ask the Lord to give us peace. Just as He came to His apostles and He comes to us and offers it to us, let us still more strongly ask the Lord to give us peace, to give us serenity, to give us the calmness that we need in order to put our faith and our trust in His love and in His mercy. One in faith, united in baptism, we offer our needs and the needs of the world to God our Father. For the Catholic Church throughout the world, may God guide and encourage all believers in their faith and reliance on Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, may God grant them wisdom and strength in building peaceful communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving the loss of a loved one during this Easter season, may God provide comfort through the hope and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this faith community who are sick in mind and body, may God give them courage as they face difficult times of treatment and recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, may God grant them the rest in the eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for Vincent McDonald and for Ligorina Mascareñas, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for humbly hearing our prayers. Accept our petitions that we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, <clears throat> Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do, thou Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Prayer to the Virgin Mary for protection. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love to conform ourselves to the Father's will, and to do what Jesus tells us, he who took our sufferings upon himself, 
and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. A prayer in time of need. Loving Father, our life and our hope, come to our aid in this difficult and uncertain time. Do with mercy on all who suffer from the coronavirus. Bless them and their families with your healing, consolation, and peace. Give and guide all who care for them, and give wisdom and insight to those working to stop the spread of this disease, and help them find a way to cure it. Console our anxious hearts, strengthen our faith, and give us the grace to trust in your goodness. Restore communities affected by the virus to wholeness and health, and in your loving mercy, give your help and protection to all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 